Hi, I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to Another Thing. When a victim goes to police with reports of sexual assault, they are immediately tested with a rape kit. And now there's a backlog of those kits across the country. And many of the kits have never been tested to find out if there was ever a rape in the first place. Recently, Vice President Joe Biden and U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch announced a program to deal with the backlog and test kits across the country. Philadelphia, Delaware, and parts of New York all got millions to deal with the problem. Another thing's Ellen Kaloje takes a look at the backlog and why the problem even exists in the first place. Ellen. Thousands of those rape kits do sit on shelves all across the country untested, but thanks to millions of dollars from the DA in Manhattan, many of those kits will now be tested in New York and here in Philadelphia and possibly bring closure to so many women. To be able to tell survivors of sexual assault that their ordeal was not forgotten, that they were not forgotten, and that we are going to pursue justice. I'm saying today to all the women awaiting justice, you are not forgotten. It's about one moment at a time. It's someone whose life has, in every way, been turned upside down and many times viciously attacked. Manhattan DA Cyrus Vance and the Justice Department have joined forces to pay for the testing of 70,000 rape kits, a combined $80 million to help get justice for survivors. Well, I thought it was really good news. It's important news that rape kits have not been tested, have languished on shelves in many, many cities for years is, is actually a, a, a public disgrace. Carol Tracy is the executive director of the Women's Law Project, an organization fighting to improve the lives of women all across the U.S. She says this money will go a long way toward helping survivors traumatized by their rapists and the system. But then when you find out that the institution that was supposed to help you, um, that was supposed to investigate, didn't do something as basic as analyze a rape kit, particularly when the rapist was unidentified, is just an additional trauma. This is the biggest investment to date to reduce the backlog of untested rape kits that we know are sitting on shelves in the United States. Today marks a historic moment in the work to end this backlog. Advocates say once these rape kits are tested, now the hard part really begins and making sure there's never a backlog of this magnitude ever again. Reporting for another thing, I'm Ellen Kaloje. All right, thank you, Ellen. To talk more about the rape kits and the backlog of rape kits across the country is Monmouth County, New Jersey prosecutor Christopher Gramiccioni. Thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Um, and we should point out that you do not have a backlog. That's right. That I'm proud to say problem. that our office does not have a backlog. But they say 18,000 law enforcement agencies across the country do have a backlog, and we're talking about possibly 100,000. Uh, rape kits that have not been inspected yet. So it's, it is a huge problem across the country. So we'll talk about how you dealt with it in a second, but let's start from the beginning. What is a rape kit? Why are they important? A rape kit is when, a vi when somebody comes in, a victim comes in and, and alleges that a sexual assault occurred. One of the first things that's done is a rape kit examination to try to recover any evidence that might be left behind by the offender. And the reason why that's important to do after somebody is, is raped or sexually assaulted is because the areas where sexual assaults happen, in the, the private area, in the mouth or otherwise, it heals very quickly. So we recover that evidence, it's typically fluids or cells or otherwise, and it's put into a kit that is later forensically tested so we can try to identify the, the offender and preserve that evidence for later prosecution. And so that's evidence in case there is a case. That's right, and that's an operative, that's a good question, Larry, because we are not in the business of forcing victims to go through the criminal justice process. Now, when they come in and report the offense, we'll take that evidence, but it's, it's that person's decision when and if they ever want to make that public and go forward on some kind of charges. Uh, we don't want to compel them and force them to go through that because it's a, obviously a serious invasion of privacy and a big decision for somebody to have to talk about that and go through the prospect of testimony. So is there a statute of limitations on rape? 
There is. It's five years, and that's the, the period of time that we retain the kits that we take for at least five years, should the victim down the road, maybe a year or two later, decide that they want to go through the criminal justice process and try to, try to convict the offender. So there's a few things based on what you're telling me that I don't understand. How can there be this huge backlog around the country of rape kits if people are coming in alleging a sexual assault and they only keep them they should only be keeping them for five years, in, unless the statute of limitations is different from state to state. Now, that's a good question, and it might vary, like you pointed out, the statute of limitations. The backlog could be driven by a lot. When we take our rape kit examinations, we work with the, the state's regional forensics lab, as well as the five local area hospitals in Monmouth County. Because of those partnerships and because of the production that those agencies and organizations do, we don't have a backlog when it comes to processing that rape kit, rape kit examination. Um, so I can't speak for any other jurisdictions across the, the country, but I can tell you here in Monmouth County, and I believe across the state, there's no backlog because of that partnership that's been formed with medical uh, you know, hospitals and otherwise. But at one time, Monmouth County did have a backlog. I believe so. Before I got there, when we launched our sexual assault nurse examiner program in 1996, it later became a statewide program that was implemented because we saw rousing success in Monmouth County. And I think in, those, in the inception of that program, there was a period of backlog because we were still working through it. The hospitals and the partner agencies that we worked with, we were breaking new ground. We didn't necessarily know how this would go down. But through trial and error and through learning the process over and over, we were able to really eradicate that and become as efficient as possible. Okay, now we set this up for the news conference in New York with Vice President Joe Biden and Attorney General Loretta Lynch and the DA in Manhattan, uh, Cyrus Vance, who all started to talk about these rape kits and the backlog across the country. There's, they're putting millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, to test some of these old rape kits. One of the things they said at the news conference, which doesn't seem to jive with what we're talking about, is they're saying they wanted to go back and look at some of these untested rape kits to solve some rapes. But you can't, it won't matter if it tests positive if the person doesn't want to come forward, right? At least in Monmouth County. Uh, maybe other jurisdictions may do it differently, but you could test the rape kits all you want. You might be able to adduce evidence that identifies a wrongdoer, somebody that you could potentially charge. But at the end of the day, the most important decision is whether that victim wants to go forward. If they don't want to go forward, we're not going to put him or her in that position of having to live through that again and come in and talk about it with a jury of 12. We're just not going to do that. How would that even occur? You, you, I know you can only talk about your jurisdiction, mm -hmm. but just let's just talk about cases in general. How would that even occur? That if you were to go back and find out that there was sex, that doesn't mean there's sexual assault in the first place. And if this person alleges sexual assault, then you're going to go ahead and charge somebody with a rape because they tested positive in a rape kit for having sex with a woman? Not necessarily. There's a whole assessment that goes into it. You, to your point, sometimes there's uh, that. Sometimes one of the most determinative factors in a in a prosecution like this is whether the sex was consensual or whether it was forced forced upon the victim right that's a big issue in pretty much every one of these cases so sometimes the evidence isn't sufficient to go forward and proceed when your standard is beyond a reasonable doubt it all depends on the facts and circumstances of that particular case so when we talk about this news conference then mm -hmm. and they say they want to go back and test all these untested rape kits because they want to solve rapes that may have happened within the statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. I, I That's think, not really going to do it. it. I think a lot of it has to do with trying to determine identity. Um, you know, you, there's DNA that's recovered as part of those rape kits examination. While there are a lot of times where the victim can identify the offender, and sometimes he or she can't. So maybe going back with these funds is to be able to use advances in testing and forensic examinations that they've had over the last you know, decade or so and try to use new methods and means to identify the wrongdoer. But if there's no case, yeah. there's no case. I mean, a, a lot true. of people might say this could be a waste of taxpayers' money, that they're going back and doing this when there's no case. And, and let, me, let me try to figure out maybe there is a reason for it. Mm -hmm. If you don't test it in, in a certain amount of time, is the test ineffective? No, what we would do is um, when we take a rape kit examination, it's, it's refrigerated so it, it, uh, the, the DNA doesn't spoil. So you can test it at a later date, but it's best to try to do so as early as possible. And with that, we're working with the victim on whether he or she consents to go forward. Because like to your point, we don't want to waste uh, the resources of the regional forensics lab or the hospitals if there's not going to be a prosecution in the end. If he or she says, absolutely, I don't want anything to do with this, I'm not going forward 
we'll still retain it for the five-year statutory statute limitations period, but um, it all really depends on what he or she. No, says. I get it, and you sound like you're doing it the right way. I just don't understand this federal money going to test rape kids that may not end up in prosecutions anyway. Who, it, who cares if they're just sitting there, if they're not going to end up in prosecutions? Each district attorney, state's attorney, or prosecutor is going to have to determine how they would use those funds if they flow into their, their office, right? I'm, but if there's a backlog where tests are not even being, for, or kits are not even being forensically examined, I think that's a good idea to at least call that backlog. My presumption is there's, there's got to be victims that are ready and willing to go forward. And for those victims, you would prioritize them. You would test the kits that were taken from them because they want to go forward, right? You want to call that backlog. We, we should point out that you don't have a problem in Monmouth County. You have no backlog. They don't. They took care of the problem in New York City. In some jurisdictions in New York, they still have a problem. In Pennsylvania, they still have a problem. In Delaware, apparently, they have a big problem. They got $1.2 million in a grant to go back and, and test some of the kids there. Thank you very much. Thank Always you. great. Monmouth County Prosecutor Chris Gramiccioni. When we come back, everybody's talking about tax reform. Nobody does anything about it. We'll find out why when we return.